Assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to talk about the carpal bones or simply the carpus. The word carpus is derived from the Greek word carpos, which means the wrist. So basically, the carpal bones uh, are made up of eight bones, eight different bones, uh, which is divided into two uh, groups. In the upper part or the proximal part and uh, the distal part each part having four different bones now the identification of the carpal bones is important uh, to know the distinguishing character of each bone so first of all the scaphoid bone this one is the scaphoid bone this bone has a board shaft and a tubercle on its lateral side so this is the lateral side as you can see here right over here this is the lateral side where there is the radius and this one is the medial side where there is the uh, ulna so now uh, this uh, scaphoid bone uh, can be easily identified by the presence of the tubercle on the lateral side the presence of the tubercle on the lateral side and the pisiform which is the smallest bone among the eight bones this is the capitate bone the capitate bone is the biggest one so it is called capitate capitate means the capital the biggest one and this bone is the trapezoid bone it resembles it looks like the shoe of a baby uh, that's the reason why it is called trapezoid and this bone, which is the hamet, which is wedged shape, having a hook near its base. So it has a hook near its base and it is wedge shape. So that's the reason it is called hamet. So these uh, four, uh, five uh, bones are very important to uh, remember how they can be identified. So now, uh, some of the important points that should be remembered in studying these carpal bones is that all these eight bones has six surfaces. And when we talk about the articulation of these bones, we see that each bone is articulated with uh, the neighboring two or three, uh, one or more bones. But uh, it's very important to keep in mind that the palmar and the dorsal uh, surfaces are non-articular on the palmar surface this is the palmar surface you can see here this is the anatomical position the palm palmar surface on the palmar surface and at the dorsal surface mm, the bones are non-articular except for the traquetal and the pisiform because the pisiform is attached anteriorly to the uh, triquetal so that is why there is the articulation there is the relation between the triquetal and the pisiform and that no any other bones are articulated uh, articulated on the palmar and the dorsal surfaces so this is the very important uh, point to be remembered and secondly um, the lateral surface of pisiform bone this pisiform bone here and the lateral surface means this one the lateral surface of the pisiform bone is grooved by the ulnar nerve so uh, this is the very important part this ulnar nerve there is a group for ulnar nerve so the lateral surface of pc form is grooved by the ulnar nerve and the third point is the palmar surface of trapezium this one palmar surface this is the palmar surface uh, i have already told you that is the palmar surface the palmar surface of the trapezium has a vertical groove this is the vertical groove vertical group there is a vertical group for the insertion of the tendon of the flexor carpi radialis because you see this is the radial side so the flexor carpi radialis you, you can remember that flexor carpi ulnaris flexor carpi radialis so here flexor carpi radialis the tendon of this muscle is attached to this vertical groove of the trapezium so this is also one of the most important points to be remembered now how we can remember these eight bones uh, starting from the lateral side whenever you start naming these eight bones you should start from the lateral side so this one so i'm writing here this one is the scaphoid bone 
scaphoid and this one is the lunate bone lunate means moon shaped so you cannot forget this one lunate means moon shaped lunar you, you can remember that and this one is the triquitral triquitral bone and this one smallest bone the pc form bone or p set bone pc form bone so skull uh scaphoid lunate triquitral triquitral pc4 now on the uh, distal part this is the trapezius the trapezium first this is the trapezium this is the trapezoid Zoid. This is the trapezoid, and this is the capitate, and this bone is the hemat bone. So the distinguishing character. Let me uh, remind you once again: lunate is moon-shaped. The scaphoid has a uh, tubercle on the lateral side. Uh, the triquetral is. Uh, triangular shape little bit uh, it is uh, uh, triquetral means having three angles you see and pc form bone it this it is the smallest bone and this is the only bone which is articulated uh, with the triquetral with one of the uh, with uh, a couple another couple bone and this one is the trapezium and the trapezium has a group for the insertion of the tendon of the flexor carpi radialis and this is the trapezoid which is the shape of uh, the shoe of a baby and this is the capitate which is the biggest uh, among all these eight uh, carpal bones and it is the hamid which is the wet shape so we finished the identification now I'm going to uh, give you uh, a way how to remember these bones right from the um, lateral side so uh, there is a well-known um, mnemonics uh, which says uh, she looks I'm writing here she looks she looks here she looks too pretty try to catch her It is uh, really uh, something that is not to be done, uh, but uh, as for convenience of remembrance, she looks too pretty, uh, which is third uh, S, scaphoid, this one, lunette, this one, triquetral, and this one, P, PC form, and this T stands for uh, trapezium, so you should not confuse trapezoid and trapezium, trapezium. Mm, which is the figure trapezium trapezium so this is first and the trapezoid means uh, looks like trape trapezium something like that so uh, this t trapezium this, this t tra trapezoid this c for capitate and h for hamet so you can easily remember that and the one important thing here uh, the articulation uh, we have uh, uh, not discussed now um, the ossification of these bones is very very important so now i am writing this is the proximal this is the proximal and this is the distal so you cannot forget if i write here five four three one two and right here i'm writing here five five two three now, what do I mean by writing 54312? Means 5 is for S, that is the scaphoid bone. Uh, it is ossified at the age of 5 years. So you cannot forget that. And L, the lunate bone, is ossified at the age of 4 years. And T, for the triquetral bone, is ossified at the age of three years but this pc form bond a small bond it is 
ossified at the age of 12 years. You can find out that. So it's very easy to remember 54312. Now for the distal port, T4 trapezium, it is ossified at the age of 5 and a trapezoid, trapezoid trapezium has the same uh, year of ossification, same age of ossification, 5, five years. And uh, for capitate, 2 years and for hamet at the age of three years. These are um, the age of ossification. It's very important. Uh, so, uh, but the articulation, as you can see here, let us take an example. For example, this capitated bone, with how many bones this bone is articulated. We can see if we have a diagram uh, in front, then it's very easy to, uh, to find out how many bones are being articulated with this particular bone. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe. So uh, something like that you can count and all together. It's not a very uh, difficult task for you to, uh, to identify how many bones are surrounding a particular bone. Now, uh, there are uh, important part of these uh, couple bones. When we talk about the attachment of the muscles, it is also an important part. So. As we talk about the attachment, attachments of these muscles, uh, all the attachments are to the four pillars. This is very, very important. One, two, three, four. Or maybe the extreme corners. You see the extreme corners. So, uh, four bony pillars. One, two, three, four. Or these four bony pillars all the uh, attachments are done right over this four pillars four corners so number one the first corner i'm writing tubercle of the scaphoid so you can easily understand this tubercle of the scaphoid number two the pc form right over here the this one, the PC4, and number three, the trapezium, and number four, the hamet. And here, how many muscles are attached? On the tubercle of the scaphoid there are only two muscles I'm not writing these muscles uh, because it will take a lot of time so on the tubercle of the scaphoid the flexor retinaculum or transverse carpal ligament is attached flexor retinaculum you see tubercle of the scaphoid so right over here tubercle of the scaphoid here the flexor retinaculum or uh, the transverse carpal ligament is attached the medial side you see here and a few fibers of the abductor pollicis brevis abductor pollicis brevis you see uh, abductor pollicis brevis right over here so a few fibers of the abductor pollicis brevis are also attached right over here and on the pisiform bone, the flexor carpi ulnaris, this is the pisiform bone, so the flexor carpi ulnaris coming right over here, and it is inserted here, you see. And flexor retinaculum and its superficial slip, flexor retinaculum on the lateral side here, and on the medial side, and the middle side here, flexor retinaculum is inserted. And abductor digiti minimi this one abductor digiti minimi abductor digiti minimi this also inserted right over here abduction abduction this one this one abduction so here it is inserted right over here and extensor retinaculum extensor retinaculum right over here extensor retinaculum it is also inserted here, the PC form bone, 
coming around here and on the PC from bone here on the anterior surface it is inserted right over here and on the trapezium the crest gives origin to the abductor pollicis brevis the crest yeah, you have a crest here trapezium abductor pollicis brevis right over here uh, flexor pollicis brevis also and opponents pollicis so these uh, all these three muscles constitute the thenar eminence yeah. thenar eminence means this one you can see these thenar eminent muscles these three muscles all these muscles uh, are originated from uh, this crest of the trapezium and second mm, the edges of the group give attachment to the two layers of the flexor retinaculum two layers of flexor retinaculum here right over here and number three uh, the lateral surface this lateral surface it gives uh, attachment to the uh, lateral uh, ligament of the wrist joint uh, wrist joint lateral ligament there is a ligament passing right over here right over here and it gives attachment to this lateral ligament and uh, number four mm, this groove this groove lodges means hides the tendon it inserts the tendon of the flexor carpi radialis flexor carpi radialis right over here flexor carpi radialis this one flexor carpi radialis here it's inserted and lastly we are talking about the hemet and the tip of the um, hook the tip of the hook gives attachment to the flexor retinaculum this one flexor retinaculum starting from here flexor retinaculum right over here inserted and uh, this medial side medial side of the hemet uh, of the hook gives attachment to the flexor digiti minimi flexor digiti minimi this one flexor digiti minimi this flexor digiti minimi here right over here so flexion you can see flexion this one. and the opponents digiti minimi opponents digiti minimi so these two muscles uh, flexor digiti minimi and op uh, opponents digiti minimi uh, are attached on the medial side of the hook of the hand.